Welcome to another edition of the Daily Vlog. My name is Dr. David Dizer. On this show, we talk about all things holistic health and wellness related. If you're interested in that topic, please subscribe and um, like this video so you get to see uh, more videos like this one and so you can stay up to date with the videos that I'm posting. I mostly am posting videos about what is interesting to me, what I'm finding very valuable for my patients, um, assessment techniques, this type of thing, to help people feel their best, feel their most optimal, but also to reduce the symptoms of disease and to try to treat the cause of disease. That's kind of my focus on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm obsessed with the glucose-insulin relationship um, lately, and um, with this obsession, I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor. I am the bionic man. I've been wearing the Freestyle Libra, um, but there are other ones out there. There's the Dexcom G5 um, out there as well, and there are other versions. What this does is it tracks your blood sugar um, all the time. So it's a, it's a little needle that you don't really feel in your arm. You can't really see it, but there's this little bump here. There's a little sticker with a needle in it. And it tracks, it continually tracks your glucose level. And all you do is you take a little device or an iPhone and just wave it over and it tells you what your blood sugar is. And um, the little device stores eight hours of data, so you only have to check it a couple times a day. And it's really, really accurate. It's about 15 minutes delayed compared to the blood levels, but it's really helpful um, to see. So I use them with all of my diabetic patients, but it's been really enlightening for me to be able to use one on myself. Where do I think this is most applicable? I don't think everyone trying to lose weight needs to wear one. I don't think all diabetics really need to to wear one. But I do think if you're not in tune with your food choices or if you're having a really difficult time with diet, it's really, really helpful. What it's, what it's brought back up for me uh, is the importance of the glycemic index. The, import, the glycemic index is how quickly a food uh, raises your blood sugar. And if it raises your blood sugar really quickly and uh, to a really extreme to an extremely high point that would be a high glycemic food if it slowly raises your blood sugar and doesn't raise it very high at all that's a low glycemic um, food this device has allowed me to get very serious about the glycemic index again I used to be serious about it now I am um, I'm, I'm going back to the roots and really helping trying to help people manage their glycemic index to lose weight you do not have to go keto to manage your blood sugar you do not have to go keto um, to to drop your weight, to manage your blood sugar, you do not have to fast. Those things are quite effective. Coming off of those things and transitioning back to normal diet can be quite difficult. Knowing how food affects your blood sugar can allow you to very simply live a natural, healthy life without, without having to go to these extremes. So today on the show, I'll just highlight some of the things I've learned over the last few days, last uh, seven days of wearing this continuous glucose monitor. I wrote a blog post on it on damihealth.com if you want to check that out. There's some more detail there about my journey. I won't go into my history today, but um, I tend to have quite, quite good blood sugar control and I have no diabetes and um, uh, I'm not at risk. I'm not, I don't have metabolic syndrome. So this is basically like a healthy person with uh, who, lift weight, who lifts weights and exercises seeing how foods affect the blood sugar. And um, I've seen some very interesting things. The first thing I've seen, liquid sugar is the literally, literally the worst thing for you. It's awful, awful, awful. I have been using what's considered a natural uh, nut milk coffee sweetener, um, which I thought uh, was very low in carbohydrate. And I was only using a little bit. It does not matter for me. It spikes my blood sugar very quickly within 30 minutes, and it comes back down within 30 minutes. So that could explain um, a few things with respect to my health, but it was really interesting because if I was pricking, pricking my finger, never would have caught, never would have caught this spike and decline. When diabetics are managing their blood sugar, or when anyone wants to check, they usually check one hour after meals and two hours after meals. I would have missed this liquid sugar spike if I would, if I was following typical protocols. Thanks to this monitor, I was able to see that. The second thing I'll mention is that cinnamon is actually really effective for slowing the absorption of blood sugar. What I did uh, in my little trials, and this is just N of one, this is just me trying things on myself. I had my typical breakfast two days in a row. The second day I had cinnamon in my coffee um, and it definitely slowed the absorption of the glucose in the food that I was consuming. So it slowed the absorption of my, carbo of my carbohydrate. Uh, still went up the to the same level, I believe, but it was very, very slow and came down 
um, at the same rate. So it was really, really nice to see that. It, did, it was effective. I did not exercise. I slept the same the night before. I had no stress. It was all fine. So it was a pretty good test on myself. It did delay the absorption of, of carbohydrate. So now I'm using cinnamon a little more often, which I think is, is really cool. I, as a naturopath, I use cinnamon, of course, to help my diabetics. But um, to, to actually see it firsthand, how it affects the, the blood sugar just doing with the same meal twice in a row, really, really powerful. I can't talk, speak highly enough of the powerful effects of cinnamon. The cinnamon is like really, really good. We should be using it all the time. Um, it, it definitely slows down the absorption of carbohydrate. So that's the second thing I learned. The third thing I learned is with a carb load, with a cheat meal, uh, we had Kits Fest here uh, on the Saturday when I was wearing my monitor. So I had a cheat meal, I had a cinnamon bun. And then on the Sunday, I had a, a muffin. So I had two higher carb uh, snacks that I wouldn't normally consume. Of course, my blood sugar was all over the place. It took me 36 hours to get back down to my resting blood sugar. So for example, in the first four days, when I was sleeping, my blood glucose 4.7. After having the cinnamon bun and then the muffin, my sleeping blood glucose 5.2. My normal blood glucose during the day, 5.2. Then on the second, at the end of the second day, transitioning into the second night, down to 4.7. And um, for, for other reasons, I have not been exercising. I have not been under extreme amounts of stress during this time. Uh, I have not been inflamed or um, had any other foods that may uh, interfere with this type of test. Literally, I had more carbs two days in a row. I could not get down to 4.7. If I had have exercised intensely, maybe I could have following an exercise because it goes up a little bit and then it should come down. If I have depleted those carbohydrate stores, I probably could have got down. But just naturally, like with my day-to-day -day living, could not get down to 4.7. Um, so next time I should try it with a bit of exercise and see how quickly I can get back down to normal. But I thought that was really, really fascinating. So just three tidbits to share with you today about glucose control. Liquid sugar, even if it's just in small amounts, even if it's just five grams per, per serving um, or less, be cautious. It will spike your blood sugar. And why is this important? Why is glycemic control important? When your blood glucose goes up, your insulin goes up. Insulin drives weight gain. Insulin tests your kidneys to hold on to sodium so you get water weight, water retention. Insulin does many things. Insulin is a growth uh, stimulator. It causes cells to grow. It causes uh, fat to be deposed and um, it causes water retention. So that's why this is important. That's why we do low carbohydrate um, in my clinic for many reasons. But um, it's really important to know. So three things that happened. Cinnamon, really, really powerful. I suggest you use cinnamon if you're trying to control your blood sugar. You will see the effects if you're tracking continuously like this. Um, uh, number two, carbing up, it takes time to recover. I'm interested to see what exercise would do to speed my recovery time. But, um, you know, the effects of a high carb meal will be lasting for more than one day, just so you know. And, um, you know, so liquid sugar, cinnamon, and the effects of, of carbing up, these are significant things. These are enlightening for me. I wanted to share them with you so I can get them out there. So just so you can know, my goodness, this stuff is, is really powerful. The only way I would have known these things is with continuous glucose monitoring. So I'm really happy to be able to try this technology, use it on myself so I think I can better um, counsel patients uh, with uh, respect to their blood sugar control and subsequent insulin release. So thrilled to be doing this work. Have you have experience with a continuous glucose monitor? If you do, submit uh, your stories in the comments. I'd love to hear all about it. I'm trying to get really, really, really good at helping people manage their blood sugar. And um, the the more the more stories that I read, the more experience that I gain from you all will uh, improve my my ability to help people. That's all I'm doing all day long here. So really excited to be able to do this kind of work. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like episodes like this, please like it and share it and do all the things. Um, I'm Dr. David Dyser. We'll see you next time.